let's talk about some of the main applications for Dante AV. For example, hospitality. In hospitality, you normally have an installed AV system with multi-screen environments such as sports bar, shopping centers, or hospitality lobbies. With Dante AV encoders being powered by Dante AV Ultra, you will be able to send high quality video with an ultra low latency in perfect time alignment across all displays that can be combined to show portions of a video wall or a blended projection and keep the synchronism. For hospitality and conference applications, multiple rooms can be monitored and operated from a centralized control room, allowing systems to expand with remote access and management. For applications in conference rooms, for example, Dante AV is ideal once that it combines video cameras, installed audio and software to make the same video conference call. With Dante Studio, Dante Virtual Sound Card, and a Dante AVH camera, for example, the entire solution can be unified into one single Dante controller without the need of other breakout boxes or other cabling infrastructure. Let's think of a meeting room application. With all Dante AV equipment connected to a local switch in the room, the PTZ camera is controlled by an operator in another room and the image is being sent to multiple displays for viewers to follow the live stream. All devices are connected to local 1 gigabit switches with a non-blocking architecture, allowing all data to flow across the local physical ports. However, how much bandwidth in total is required on the trunk line for the Stunte AV system? As a quick simple math to verify how much bandwidth is needed for Dante, one could simply add up all data rates of all equipment and get to a generous and ideal trunk line speed. However, this is not considering the actual signal flow when devices are subscribed to each other. More bandwidth can certainly help, but do you understand the traffic in each direction? How much audio is going from switch 1 to switch 2? How much video is coming on the other way around? Are you unicasting or multicasting media? To answer these questions, let's take a look at the data rates of all our equipment and understand what goes where. Considering the default unicast behavior of all Dante media flows, audio and video will be sent exclusively to the subscribed receiver. Therefore, we can check how much data goes from switch 1 to switch 2 to verify one direction of the trunk line load. From switch 1, a maximum of two video channels can go to the screens connected to Dante AV Ultra receivers on switch 2. Please note that there are three Dante AV Ultra transmitters on Switch 1, the UC Host PC, the User Bring Your Own Device PC, and the PTZ Camera. As all devices default to sending media per unicast, each of them can only send one video channel to each of the receivers on Switch 2. Therefore, there can only be a maximum of two unicast video channels coming from Switch 1 to Switch 2. Considering the maximum data rate of both screens together is 800 megabits per second, we could confirm that only the data necessary to feed these two screens will be sent from switch 1 to switch 2. Does it make sense? Let's check the other way round. How much data goes from switch 2 to switch 1? Practically none, as there are no sources on switch 2 sending media to destinations on switch 1. However, keep in mind that even when not sending or receiving media, all Dante devices consume a little bit of bandwidth for clocking and other network operations. Now, let's take the maximum data rate of two unicast video flows that are required by the two Dante AV Ultra receivers on Switch 2, a maximum of 800 megabits per second of Dante AV packets would be loading the trunk line. As an engineering principle to design AV systems, we must add 20% reserve to that bandwidth to account for possible peaks and other high traffic moments on the network. Summing it all, we get a result of 960 megabits per second to safely transport the two video flows coming from switch 1 to switch 2. In the opposite direction of the trunk line, from switch 2 back to switch 1, we don't need to consider more than just a few megabits per second for the clocking and housekeeping packets sent from the two Dante AV Ultra receivers to the network. So, in this case, with a trunk line of 960 megabits per second already including 20% reserve bandwidth, we could operate the system in a unicast method of media distribution. 
as Unicast only starts sending media upon the receiver subscription, we can assume that if none of the screens on Switch B are subscribed, the trunk line won't carry the estimated data. As soon as the Dante operator clicks on the intersection on Dante controller, the estimated data will then start flowing through the trunk lines. Working on the edge of the maximum speed of a cable is risky. To avoid data loss, it's possible to expand the trunk line bandwidth with a link aggregation group. A lag is a group of ports that will logically behave as one. When configured to work as a single trunk line, the total bandwidth of the lag will be the sum of both ports' data transfer speeds, in this case, two 1 gigabit ports grouped as a 2 gigabit trunk line. And what if we want to send the same image for both screens on Switch 2? Is there a way to split signals with Dante AV? You may remember the chapter about Dante AV operations where we learned how to create a multicast flow on Dante controller. If your system requires splits of the same signal going to multiple destinations, you must plan for multicast. Multicast will consume just one flow of your device and can be sent to as many destinations are subscribed to that multicast flow as members of a group. When multicasting Dante audio or video, make sure to engage IGMP on all switches and choose one of them to be the IGMP querier. Each switch will filter their local IGMP lists, but only one switch in the whole network must be configured to control all lists as the IGMP querier. Back to our bandwidth estimation, let's consider now a multicast scenario. The image from any of the Dante AV sources on switch 1 can now go to both receivers, consuming just one video flow of the device. The multicast packets can go through the trunk line, and when they arrive at switch 2, as IGMP is activated, the switch will replicate that packet and send only to the ports connected with devices subscribed to that multicast group. With the multicast flow, you can reduce the trunk line load considerably. From the previous 960 megabits per second, now with only 480 megabits per second, both screens on Switch 2 can subscribe to the same multicast video flow and show splits of the same image coming from any source on Switch 1. For higher education applications such as classrooms or auditoriums, the ease of Dante means that Dante AV cameras, encoders and decoders could be added at any time with plug-and-play interoperability and seamless integration with already installed Dante audio devices. Dante Studio, for example, could be installed in all lecturers' computers, allowing them to share their slides and screen through the same network. Both Dante AV devices and the Dante Studio feed could be sent to a lecture capture recording station or to remote learning online platforms. Let's imagine a lecture hall with a lectern PC connected to Dante AV transmitter, a projector and two active speakers on the wall, a PTZ camera, and two screens at the rear so people sitting far from the stage can follow the explanation and the slides magnified on the display. Far from the hall, the central control room is monitoring all audio and video signals, mixing the sources with a vision mixer and a sound desk, and sending the final program back to the monitors at the rear of the hall and to a cloud storage PC connected to the network with Dante AV Ultra. With everything connected to local switches with IGMP active and only one IGMP querier, what signals can be sent via unicast, which ones must be sent via multicast, and how much bandwidth is required on the trunk line for this Dante AV system? The Lectern PC must send its image to the local projector and a split to the vision mixer in the control room. The PTZ camera will only send its image to the vision mixer. That can be achieved with the default unicast. As both monitors will show the same content mixed by the Vision Mixer, we can use multicast to save up bandwidth on our trunk lines coming from the control room. The LMS PC inside the control room will also subscribe to that same multicast. Audio from the sound desk can also be multicast to both active speakers, but as the channel count is very low, this will only consume a few megabit per second. This is how a system design should start, by identifying the methods of distribution to understand the signal flow and data consumption on each link of this topology. 
Back to our basic question, how much data goes from switch 1 to switch 2? As our vision mixer connected to switch 2 is connected to a Dante AV Ultra RX with just one video receiving flow, either the unicast flow from the PTZ camera or the multicast flow from the Lectern PC can be received at any given time. Both won't be able to subscribe to the same receiving flow simultaneously. So how much data goes back to switch 1? The vision mixer output being multicast to the screens at the rear of the lecture hall and the audio from the sound desk being multicast to the active speakers on the wall. Summing up and adding the 20% reserve, the maximum bandwidth would be around 720 megabits per second in one direction and 728 megabit per second in the other. Working on a 70% saturation of your links is healthy for your system, so I would say a simple 1 gigabit per second trunk line would suffice for this example. Broadcast studios could benefit from the Dante AV multicast distribution and have multiple teams monitoring the same camera feed. The sound crew will need to operate the boom arm and avoid leaking the mic on the camera frame. The colorist will need to control the exposure and the white balance. And a server with Dante Studio will be recording a split of each camera for post-production. A house of worship is similar to a broadcast studio in terms of its audio and video flows. You may have multiple teams interacting with the same subject on camera and extra splits for different purposes. In this system, we have a lectern microphone, a DSP processing audio, an amplifier feeding passive speakers, a projector on the wall showing what's coming from the media player in the control room, a hearing loop amplifier, and a PTZ camera following the presenter. In the control room or front of house position, you have the wireless mic receivers, a computer running Dante controller and possibly Dante virtual sound card for recording, a sound desk and the encoder for the media player. Outside in the lobby, there are two monitors for people to follow the live stream. Let's assume these will always show the same image coming from the PTZ camera. How much bandwidth would be required in the trunk line for this Dante AV system? From switch 1 to switch 2, a multicast video flow from the PTZ camera and all audio channels from DSP, wall plate and lectern mic should be made available. From switch 2 back to switch 1, a unicast flow from the media player and all audio channels from sound desk and wireless receivers should be going. That gives us a maximum trunk load of 600 megabits in each direction already including the 20% reserve. With time, it will be even easier for you to visualize the signal flows according to their distribution methods, unicast or multicast. When you have the chance to analyze and specify a project still on its early days, every decision will be made more consciously and you won't face surprises after the deployment. Make sure to specify cabling infrastructure to fulfill the data speed requirements. In doubt, choose switches with 10 gigabit ports. Those ports are 10 times faster than the other 1 gigabit ports, which will give you a certain peace of mind for when working with Dante AV systems. However, that doesn't mean that you can forget what you've learned here in terms of calculating the flows and activating IGMP. For convergent networks, which are systems with other types of traffic sharing the same infrastructure and bandwidth, it's important to configure QoS quality of service to prioritize Dante packets over others that are not so critical for low latency applications. Dante itself has three types of packets that can be identified with DSCP or different service code points to allow prioritization when packets are queued up before their chance to go through a busy port. Clocking packets have the DSCP56 and must be configured as the top priority on your QoS settings. Audio and video DSCP46 are second priority and Dante controls DSCP number 8 are the third queue. All other types of traffic must be deprioritized to a lower best effort queue, allowing the Dante inherent packets to always go first. QoS is configured inside managed switches and users must check how many queues are supported by that specific model and firmware. In this case, the legacy Cisco SG300s used to support up to four queues, being number four the highest queue. 
More modern switches will have more cues, so please check within the available settings inside your managed switch. Now, if you're designing a system today, you should be aware that some Dante tools can provide you a better scalability and make your project already future-proof. When designing a Dante AV network, the addition of Dante Domain Manager can increase your system's possibilities and add Layer 3 features to your Dante AV devices. With Dante Domain Manager or DDM, your devices can be organized in groups of interest arbitrarily, as if they were folders in your computer showing specific documents, pictures or music files. DDM adds user access control with password, keeps a history log of all events on the network and proactively sends email alerts with categorized reports in case something happens on the system. Not only it helps organizing your system in domains, but it also helps the operation from Dante controller when systems are too large. Yes, the left system has 27 devices and the right one has 80 devices, and it's almost impossible to trust your actions in such a crowded network view. DDM can be added at any time and it will discover all Dante AV devices regardless of their IP addressing and subnet configuration. With Dante Domain Manager, AV systems can have improved security with controlled user access in each domain. You can organize the devices in terms of how they relate to each other, how you want to see them and work with them into these domains. And DDM will even work as a proactive monitor of your system status, sending categorized alerts and synchronizing the whole experience with LDAP in SNMP servers. With DDM, your system can be easier for technicians to operate by only showing them what they need to do. And at the same time, having a Dante domain manager on top of multiple subnets allow media sharing across the network without a single change on the IP settings or the IT infrastructure. Install DDM in a server in any subnet on the network, let it discover the gear automatically and start grouping your devices into protected domains. Summarizing this chapter, finally, audio and video together. Dante AV is optimized for 1 gigabit links, but systems can scale rapidly. For saturated systems, QoS allows prioritizations of PTP clocking, AV media and Dante control packets over other types of traffic in a convergent network. When designing a system with Dante AV, estimate bandwidth wisely. Keep in mind the burstiness of video packets, so consider the max rate and add always the additional reserve to avoid peaks in the system. Enable IGMP on all switches to avoid video multicasting bogging down the network and remember to configure only one as the IGMP querier. Dante AV is the right choice for your projects. It offers high quality video with ultra low latency supported by the vast and growing Dante ecosystem benefiting from hardware and software, backwards compatibility and future proof readiness. Need to say more?